Welcome to Yellow Brick Road. I am Jordan, and today we're going to talk about some uh, movies, movie archetypes, and uh, this is a fan request. Movie archetypes of the like the masculine character, and I'm probably going to add in my little sense in regards to the hero character. Try to tie them together somewhat. Uh, before I get started, don't forget to share, support, hopefully donate to Devon's Journey to Recovery, to Helping Victims of AFRICOM, the Cohen Daily, the Australian Boy. Also, help out some content creators, Stevie, a.k.a. Red Economics, Sleepy J, get him a coffee, and optionally, Ali Alexandra. All links in the description box. All right. So, this is a movie from, or a video from Matthew Danzak. And I'm not going to play it. It's 22 minutes long. I'm not playing the whole thing. But this was a very well-made video. I think it's very good. And he's he's going off... Uh, he's using uh, the movie Heat with Al Pacino and Robert De Niro, Val Kilmer, people like that. Ashley Judd. Oh, oh Ashley. And, <laughs> and uh, the title is The Importance of Family. But... Yes, he ties that in more towards the second half of the video. But the part I'm going to be talking about is the beginning. You know, the first three or four minutes where he's talking about the the masculine hero character. And I'm going to take that. And like I said, I'm going to tie it to my favorite archetype in film. Which is the hero or champion character. And that has, there's no gender involved with that, right? And even with this, even even with this, the masculine hero or the masculine character, it's not exactly tied to having a dick or not. It's tied to, it, it's something, it's an archetype a character is portraying. So you can easily have a female version of this archetype. But, yeah. You know, as far as the maker, the Matthew Danzig guy, I don't know if he if he associates it with men, biological men, or if he's just calling it like the masculine character. I don't, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, but regardless, it's still very well made. I believe that would be an important thing to make to make a make a discrimination on, or like which one which one does Matt mean? But regardless, I would definitely use or talk about these ideas in regards to the masculine character in films, or if there's multiple masculine characters. All right, so let's, let's, uh, let's check it out. He is a crazy movie, too. I haven't seen it in a while, but it's fucking good. always a thing in film when the two main opposing characters usually it's typically it's hero and villain to where they finally have that meeting a real meeting not just we had hand-to-hand combat but when a real conversation happens those are always the most pivotal scenes in movies trying to portray that these opposing forces these equal but opposing forces meeting each other or maybe they're not so equal. Maybe we find out they're not so equal. But uh, here we go. In the West, men are men. Get up. To learn about the present, you must first study the past. And it's evident that writer-director Michael Mann is a student of the game. Westerns, detectives, gangsters, and action genre Gangsties. films define the nucleus of man's arsenal. But what does man... Now, real quick. In spiritual concepts, I guess they would call it, uh, you know, once born versus twice born. And I think that plays out. I think a lot of films use that concept. Maybe not the same exact words, but they, they use that concept, I believe, of the, the man of the world... 
and then the man who can negotiate the world and something beyond it, which I would call the hero archetype or the the champion archetype. This is more of a the once born right man of the world. They'd be more known as, you know, kind of kind of grounded in the world they're in. They they don't go beyond that as a character, right? The director can by showcasing like here's how he's fucking up and here's how he can grow and stuff, but the character itself is kind of locked into a world that they're in. All right, here we go. This is well made. But what does man say about men? Michael's 95 crime drama entry Heat has several classical genre elements whilst at the same time flips the tropes that genres are known for. Author and critic Robert Warshow studied western and gangster films, stating that the gangster is intelligent, wise, Remember Jimmy McElwain on the yard used to say, you want to be making moves on the street, have no attachments, allow nothing to be in your life that you cannot walk out on in 30 seconds flat if you spot the heat around the corner. Crude. <laughs> Goal-oriented and lonely. And the Western hero has similarities of loneliness, however, he is more tranquilo, because for him, life is unavoidably serious, not from the disproportions of his own temperament. The Westerner is also a gentleman. Put the television set down. I never cheated on you, you bitch. Well, maybe you should have. Whilst the two top buildings in Heat are lonely, man flips the trope and makes the Western hero, in this case, Al Pacino's Vincent Hanna, in an agitated state taking everything with utmost sincerity. This is my operation. I have tactical command that supersedes your rank. They will walk away and you will let them. He now, yeah, and it, there's such a sense of when, when you have like these type of characters where they're like very calculated, meticulous, and and geniuses and you know in the in the sense of their world right he's not just a cop or detective he's a super duper cop and Al and uh robert de niro is like a super duper criminal right he even shows it in the video where he like he makes sure he doesn't touch fucking things he's leaving no fingerprints anywhere like he's he's like a ghost because the whole point is to get the thing i want and get away with it Al Pacino's job is to catch him. and He does all the meticulous little things to try and catch him. They're like equal, equal but opposite forces of each other in, in that sense. And, uh, and yet, uh, that's, I think, very cool, very cool in films, which may be, like, you know, <laughs> dying off in a way. In fact, you'll hear this 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 idea about films that like, oh, the hero character is only as good as his best villain, right? That showcases the depth of the hero of the hero character by showing how deep the bad is with the bad character, right? Which is why I didn't like the whole Marvel Thanos thing. I uh, I want Hitler uh, idea of wipe out half universe. Or resources. Like, well, how good's your hero's gonna be compared to that? <laughs> they did better when they were fighting each other. When Cap when uh, Captain America is fighting Iron Man. That made more that added more depth than their big bad villain. It which gave them like not, nothing but just a big bad scary guy. Alright, here we go. Your rank, they will walk away and you will let And a rat save the universe, I'm saying. He is constantly on the move, looking for action. You don't live with me. You live among the remains of dead people. It's also noted that by... I think there's like, when we're talking on the, the once born, like the, the man level, I think there's a thing of uh, 
idea of perfection or seeking perfection or trying to trying to win in a way. I think that's as much of a dynamic as anything with the with the cat and mouse thing going on with uh, De Niro and Pacino in a movie like Heat. I think that's a part of it. Even though he, in this video he's going to bring up the idea of Pacino, like the difference between these guys, these two characters, is that Pacino's character can walk away, right? He can let go, as opposed to Robert De Niro's character who's going to hold on and like obsess about it. I think that's a part of the obsession for De Niro or for uh, Pacino, his character. I think that's more of the that's a, I think that's a part of the obsession. They're like, oh, I use this skill of letting go in order to still, you know, get the job done, the thing that he focuses on. Here we go. Bob De Niro's gangster role of Neil McCauley can display gentlemanly traits in some instances by treating women with respect. I didn't mean to be rude. I didn't recognize you. I work in metals. I'm a salesman. My name's Neil. Or stating to individuals at the establishment that he's robbing to remain calm because he's not going to hurt them. We want to hurt no one. We're here for the bank's money, not your money. Your money is insured by the federal government. You're not going to lose a dime. Warshow also states that the gangster is loud and noisy. Say hello to my little friend. But man, again, flips it and makes the westerner the boisterous one. This. I think that's flipping the the cinematic uh the cinematic archetype of the man I'm the man character. I think that's flipped. Not as much of the masculine part. The masculine part can be loud or it can be quiet, like typically quiet stoic type. But all right, here we go. If anything, man's men are something from a Howard Hawks picture, which, according to Peter Wallen, are an exclusive, self-sufficient, all-male group, which are used to being constantly in danger and live outside of society. Wallen adds that Hawks men pride themselves on professionalism, giving no praise, and if somebody doesn't get the job done, well... He just wasn't good enough. That's why he got it. <laughs> I'm going to stop it there. And to stop it. Uh, oh, that is hilarious. All right, that's kind of the that that seeking of perfection. Uh, almost to like an obsessive sense of it. All right, and uh, whatever's done is like not good enough, or you know, I'll. I'll one up it. I'll do better. And it's not even has. It doesn't even have to be about someone else. It could be about the character themselves. They do this to themselves, where it's a uh, strive for perfection. But whatever this on the man level character does will never be good enough. Like they'll they'll just keep going. Like this guy says in the video about uh, Pacino's character, right? Where uh, he kills De Niro. But it doesn't stop with De Niro, right? He dies and moves on, but then there's another. There's gonna be a new fucking super criminal or gangster or whatever. They'll just keep going, and that's kind of the part where I'm gonna start talking about my personal, more favorite type of archetype in film is the hero champion character, and the biggest separation. Right, there's a lot of similar traits there. A lot of similar traits. The, the seeking of perfection. The nothing's good enough. Always do better. Uh, the the mission. Like, one of my favorite lines in uh, Angel. Like, it's about the mission, bro. <laughs> it, like it's always about the mission. It's always about the mission. But the one separating thing would be uh, love. <laughs> you look at some of the greatest characters, at least in my opinion, my opinion, some of the greatest characters we've ever seen on screen, or in stories anywhere, 
love is always the key factor. They are willing, my favorite characters, the hero champion character, love always takes precedence over all of it because that's the fucking point. De Niro and Pacino's character will be like, love's a distraction from the mission. The other, the hero champion characters say love is the mission. That's the whole fucking point of this. There's a reason why uh, Bruce Wayne in The Dark Knight will, I will give this up. I will give this up and find, like, hopefully there's someone better than me. Right, some sort of humility there. Like, I will give this up, be with the person I love. Neo, the whole, his whole point, right? You can either go here and save Zion, or you can go find Trinity and... Which was which will guarantee the doom of Zion, and he chooses Trinity. Hero's supposed to sacrifice everything, right? That's a, that's the typical idea of it. Typical cinematic archetype is that the hero character gives up love for the sake of uh, saving the 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 world or whatever. But granted, those movies don't portray the that the person they love as Love, love. Like, they don't put a definition on love of how important it is. Which is what these other movies do, I believe. And the thing driving a Batman or a Neo or whatever is, it's not that, uh, it's not that they're choosing against love and then just, like, I need to save the world. Step aside distraction it's more of they can't have it without doing the duty they can't actually have the love without doing their duty or love is just avoiding them period right that's more of the case with bruce wayne or his love for rachel she's with harvey dent and uh you know bruce is even though he would still, I think he would still do the Batman thing. It's just when uh, when there's no when there's no chance at love in a way, it becomes kind of a driving force. As in, like in a way, like that's what they're constantly seeking. And once love shows itself, they're ready to to choose that like every fucking time. But yet they're the hero champion. Fucking sacrifice yourself for the world guy. How the fuck did that happen? <laughs> well, maybe the hero character is much more uh, complex than what we may be used to as far as seeing in storytelling. Um, might be more to the character than uh, the sacrificial lamb, if you will. So... Those are my favorite types of characters. Neo is all for Trinity. But at the same time, it's like he can't actually... This this threat threatens his ability to be with Trinity. It does. <laughs> uh, so he has to like... Fuck, I can't just stop and sit alone with Trinity. Right, obviously these guys have... You know, bigger goals of wanting to make the world better and save the world and shit, right? They definitely have that in mind, but at the same time, it's like they can't actually get the love they want without that shit being better. Without the, if there's no machine, if there's no machines, uh, there's no machine world chasing the fucking humans in Zion in the Matrix movies. Like, oh yeah, okay, no big deal. I was I was after this the whole time anyways. That's my biggest 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 aspiration, biggest 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 goal or desire or thing I want out of life. That's my reason. Uh as opposed to the Al Pacino character in the Heat film. Right? You take away criminals, like mastermind criminals, you get rid of those. I wonder 
I wonder if he feels like an empty, like an empty void in himself. Like, oh, my purpose. I know what to do. <laughs> That's kind of the, all my rambling kind of sums up to that main difference there. Uh, saving the world is not who these characters are. The hero champion characters. It's not who they are. The love part is. And in a way, the saving the world part is just a barrier to that love. At least that seems like how they how they're acting on it. And then the once born the once born man man characters that thing that they're locked into, that battle is their obsession. <laughs> right? They neglect and destroy the love in their life for the sake of that obsession or goal or whatever. It's it's quite interesting. I I love like, I rambled a bit there, but fuck is this that shit's super duper interesting. And no, it's not stuck in just movie world. It's not just movie world. This can play itself out in actual life. That's what I try to tell people. I'm like, yeah, I know he just you know jumped off a building, flew, did 13 backflips, and landed on his feet, and then ran away, and then made it safely. <laughs> it's so unrealistic. Yeah, I know that's unrealistic. That's not the the thing that you can actually get from it. Something is the narrative underneath the hidden not so hidden narrative from writers directors actors on and on and so forth that's where i think the the value of movie value of movies comes in beyond just something's fun or entertaining or like a you love a genre or a topic or whatever so that's where i'm at i think the mad guy gets it all right, that's it for me. Please subscribe if you like. Comment, agree, disagree. Tell me what you think. Uh, I don't know. What's your idea of the of the hero? Of the of the or what's your favorite type of character in movies? Mine is clearly the hero champion character, which has nothing to do with male or female. Like it could be men, it could be women, trans doesn't talk like that hero archetype when someone can. Showcase that in a movie, I think, is brilliant. Uh, so you tell me what your favorite archetype is. Don't forget to share, support, and hopefully donate to all the links in the description box. Check them out. If you have money, donate. If you don't, share them. Kind of that simple. Do it. All links in the description box. And with all that said, give this video a thumbs down. Actually, I had to like look down and... Uh, Make sure my mic was on the whole time. Like I just, I didn't do all that for just no reason. Whatever. No one, no one will see this. No one will see that. <laughs> no one will see it. But give this video a thumbs down, even though you can't see them anymore. Freak. What do I do now? Do it anyways. Give the video a thumbs down. Say you wanna get him.